Well, we got a very special family friend in the house today. He is not just a guest, he is family. And he's here in the building today. He's been coming for years to bless our house. He's coming all the way from Nashville, Tennessee, all the way from Impact Church. Can we give a big Way World Outreach welcome to Pastor Derek Faison? Come on, let's hear it for him. While you're standing, why don't you give God a good praise right here? This is a good spot right here to give God your best praise. Let me hear you. Do this for me. Would you shake somebody by the hand? Tell them, neighbor. Come on, you ain't looking at him. Tell them, neighbor. I don't know about you, but God's been too good to me for me to be quiet about it. So you got to excuse me for a minute while I give God a praise. Now go ahead and praise him like you want to. Come on. Come on. Come on. Act like you know up in here. Come on. Shake yourself and give him a praise in here. Come on. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we have been commanded to be glad and rejoice in it. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Where are my glad people at? Let me hear you. Holler at your boy. Be seated, be seated, be seated. Listen, I'm so glad to be home. Amen. This is my second home, the Way World Outreach Church. Amen. Amen. I bring you greetings from the Impact Church of Nashville, that great church that I pastor in Nashville, Tennessee. I believe, I can say this, I believe it's the greatest church in the world. Amen. <laughs> we have great leaders there, great members there, and they released me to come and share a word with you. I'll be honest with you, there are not many people that I would leave on a Sunday morning to come and preach for other than Pastor Marco Garcia. There are not many people I would leave. Amen. Give God praise for your pastor. Amen. And Sister Lisa, amen. Give God, in fact, give God praise for Pastor Armando and all the pastors and leaders across all of your campuses. Y'all can do way better than that. Come on. Good leadership is hard to find. Come on. Living right, doing right, speaking the word. Give God praise for them. So we're so happy for all of you. Listen, listen, I'd be remiss to not give you greetings. My wife, Lady Tanya Face, sends greetings to the Impact Church of Nashville. She just wants to say hi. You can give God praise for her. Amen. Amen. A great woman of God. Amen. She's preparing. Matter of fact, I got to throw this in here before I get in trouble. She's preparing for our very first women's conference that we've had at our church. Amen. August 24th called Conquering Hell in High, we in high Heels. Come on, somebody. We're going to be stomping on the devil. Amen. We're calling together women from all over the country. Amen. Who are going to be empowered and be in blaze. Amen. To step on the enemy and have great things happen in their lives. August 24th. I know you guys got a lot of things going on. You guys just came out of two or three different conferences. But I would love to see some of my Wave Family Church show up in Nashville and just shut it down. Come on, ladies only. Just shut it down. It's one day. It's Saturday, August 24th. You can go online, impactnashville.org, to get information about that. Can you say amen? amen? Listen, it's time for the word of God. How many people are ready for the word from the Lord? I understand you guys are in Holy Week or Holy Month. And so you guys have been having this discussion about the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. I've been hearing testimonies of many people getting filled with the Holy Spirit in your Bible classes and on your Sunday mornings. So I just wanted to come out here by the leading of the Lord and just add to that conversation. You, don't, you guys mind? I just wanted, I came all the way from Nashville to deliver something to you. I, you know, I'm a weird person now. I don't know if it's because I'm pastoring a church now or whatever, but I'm really funny about where I go and where I minister. I like to feel like I'm on assignment. I like to feel like that God directed my steps and moved some things around so that I would be here at this time to share with you the word of the Lord. And it is with that conviction that I bring you this message on this morning. Can you say amen? amen. Say amen again. Amen. Turn with me to the Gospel of St. John, chapter 16. 
For sake of time, we're going to read just two verses there. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 16, beginning at verse 12. I'll give you my scripture and I'll give you my title. Amen? I still, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them right now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. My God. Go back to the beginning of verse 13, where it says, When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will, get this now, underline this, he will guide you into all truth. And I'm going to use for a simple subject this morning, guided by, guided by glory. Amen. Somebody say that. I'm being guided by glory. Father, bless your word on today in Jesus' name. Amen. More than once, more than once, Jesus told his disciples that he was going to be leaving them soon. And so in this scripture here, he is reiterating, reiterating that same conversation. I'm getting ready to leave you. And so knowing their concerns about Jesus leaving, he reassures them that he would not leave them alone. But he would send them another comforter. Another comforter. The Greek word for another here is allos, which means another of the very same kind. So this would not be a different spirit. This would actually be Christ in another form. That though he was leaving them physically, he was going to return to them spiritually. Somebody said, what good is that? I'll tell you, he's not going to be just with them. He's going to be in them. Being with them, he had limitations. He had to sleep. He had to rest. He had to go, you know. <laughs> but being in them meant that he would never be far. He would never be away from them. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. This is the Holy Spirit that you guys have been studying about and teaching about. I want you to get that in your spirit because you have to understand that having Christ in you, the same Christ that the disciples were able to eat with, walk with, talk with physically, now he is in you. Not a different Christ, but the same Christ is now in us. I don't have to be envious. Many times we talk about, boy, I wish I was back there in the day when Jesus walked around and walked on the seashores of Galilee. But, he's, but, but the same Christ who was doing those miracles is now in you. Aren't you glad about that? Somebody give God praise for Christ being. So the Holy Spirit is described using a lot of names in the Bible, but here he is called the Spirit of Truth. Now, let me unpack that. The spirit of truth. In this day and age, truth is rare. Truth is so rare that people can hardly distinguish between what is true and what is false. We have 24-hour news cycles that are constantly giving us information. We are constantly inundated with social media, Facebook, Instagram. And in this day and age, you can put anything out there and somebody will think it's true. It could be the most insane, it could be the most asinine, it could be the most ridiculous thing, but somebody's going to think it's true. In fact, even this political cycle we're going through right now, it is difficult for us to even choose candidates because we can't distinguish between what is true and what is false. Oh, y'all going to get tight up in here. We, 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 we. <sighs> Jesus warned us, look, I'm gonna stay with me here, stay with me. Jesus warned us that in the last days that many false prophets would arise that many false Christs would arise, that we see in church, even among church people, that there, are many, that there are many false teachers who would come in among us. And here's what's bad. They would come with signs and wonders. They would come with abilities and gifts. And so, pay, so many people are carried away with people's gifts and abilities that they don't look under the hood and examine the character. And the reason the church is suffering, I believe, is because we're too carried away with people's abilities, but we do not watch their life to see if what they're saying lines up with what they're living. Oh, it's going to be tight up in here. These people will be so proficient and so amazing with their gifts and their abilities and their ability to preach or sing or teach. We'd be so swept away with their stage presentation that the Bible says that the very elect would possibly be deceived. That means people who normally have discriminating, a discriminating palate. 
That means that even the people that we respect who would normally be able to discern with keen intensity, even those people can possibly be deceived. And I know you're too deep. I know you're too spirit-filled. I know nobody can trick you. But Jesus already warned us that if it was possible, even those people would be deceived. Oh, are you with me so far? I say if possible, Pastor, because true glory cannot be imitated. He said, if possible, they might be tricked, but true glory, true anointing cannot be imitated. And my concern with the, new, with the church of this day is that we don't know the true anointing if it hit us in the head. We don't know it. We, we, we don't know. Everything that is being marketed to us as God is not God. And, and the bad thing is that we don't know the difference. Some of you probably remember this. I'm telling my age now, but they used to have a commercial with the Tide commercial, and they would have two T-shirts, and one would be washed in Tide, and one white T-shirt be washed in the other brand, and they would say, well, this is clean until you put both of them up together, side by side, then you could distinguish between one thing and another. What concerns me in the church is that we don't have the ability to discern what is true and what is not. But God wants to talk to us. In our text, I want you to notice something regarding the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm going somewhere. Just stick with me. Uh, I want you to notice something regarding the Holy Spirit and why we need the Spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is said to be speaking. When the Holy Spirit comes, at least three times, Jesus said the Holy Spirit would be speaking. When I send you the Spirit of truth, he's going to be talking to you. He's going to be talking to you. He's not just going to be on for the ride. He's not just going to be a silent partner. He's not just going to be somebody that sits in the, in the passenger seat of your car. He's not just going to be your buddy walking around like a ghost hanging around with you, but he's going to be talking to you. Somebody say, Lord, talk to me. Jesus said, he to have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. I'm going to be talking to you. Not he to have a mouth. It's he to have an ear. The challenge with many of us is not because you have a mouth. The problem is that you cannot hear correctly. I need God to deal with my hearing apparatus. I need God to talk to me. So the Holy Spirit will come speaking. Jesus said this. He said, my sheep shall know my voice and another they will not follow. There are many voices in the world, many influencers in the world. And it's important that we learn to distinguish the voice of God. If you do not learn to distinguish the voice of God, you can confuse his voice with other voices. If you do not know for yourself when God is speaking, you can be confused by the sea, the tidal wave of misinformation that's being fed to you. And it'll be difficult for you to maneuver and make good decisions because you don't know when God is speaking to you or not. And God is trying to train us to discern his voice because his sheep know his voice. And God is so proficient at it that sometimes he will change the container because I don't want you hooked on the container. Some people can only hear God when their favorite speaker is seeking this, when their favorite singer is singing. If the pastor don't come to church, I'm not coming to church. But God is trying to train us in this last day to understand that you want to hear his voice no matter who's speaking it. Do you hear the voice of your father speaking to you? I don't care if they're black or they're white or they're a woman or they're a man. All I want to know is can you hear the voice of God? Can you hear me in here? If you don't learn to distinguish the voice of God, you can very easily become a victim of deception and end up in error. Oh, it can't happen to me. Oh, yes, it can. Some of you Bible scholars will remember when the Lord called Samuel to be a prophet. The Bible said that he was working in the temple, but he didn't know God. So that when God called him into the ministry, he thought it was the voice of Eli. Which is showing how easy it is that you can be in church and not know God. That some of us are so, so hooked on being mentored and taught and baby fed and spoon fed by somebody that you have not learned to develop to hear God for yourself. 
My job as a pastor is to teach you to discern the voice of God for yourself. You may come in as a new Christian and you may come in as a new believer, but I'm going to take you through baby steps, through discipleships, but ultimately the goal is to teach you to hear the voice of God for yourself. Do you hear God speaking to you? And I know, I know some of you are, are, are loyal to your mentors and you're loyal to the people that brought you in. But listen, if you do not hear your tr yourself to, to train yourself to hear the voice of God, listen, Eli might have trained you, but God called you. Let me get out of here because y'all mad at me. Eli might have brought you in. Eli might have been the one to train you in the things of God. He might have taught you how to sit and how to stand and how to dress. But ultimately, you need to hear the voice of God for yourself. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I hear you. If not, you will be open to what the Bible calls a spirit of error. In 1 John 4 and, 5, 4 and 6, it talks about the spirit of error. The spirit of error is that spirit that makes people believe a lie. I have never seen a day like today where people will knowingly and openly believe a lie. They will believe the most outrageous stuff that you give them. Some of y'all got friends, y'all got family members that no matter how much you talk to them, even in the face of new information, they still will believe a lie. Even when what they have taught, been taught has been proven to be absolutely wrong, they will still believe it. They are under what the Bible calls a strong spirit of delusion. And a spirit of delusion is that spirit that makes you call right wrong and wrong right. And what we're seeing in our society and in our churches of many people, because you lack discernment, because you don't know the difference, you are calling things that are wrong right and right wrong. And no wonder you're getting no victory in your life because you don't know a bald-faced lie when it's staring you in the face. Oh, I'm coming down here. I ain't coming all the way from Nashville and play with you. We need discernment in our church. We need better to see what God is. Okay. All right, wait a minute. I, I can't go there yet. Spirit of delusion. And this spirit of delusion purposely misleads people by creating false doctrines. And it twists the word of God. And it twists it so that instead of letting the word change you, you want to change the word to fit your own personal preferences and proclivities. Instead of you bringing yourself up to the word of God and to the standard, you want to lower the word of God to fit what you're comfortable with. And no wonder we can't get the victory in our churches because Bible scholars and Bible teachers and people that are even up in front of us are trying to twist it and turn it. I've never seen a day like this where we excuse the stuff that, some, that the saints at one time we, we wouldn't, wouldn't be named among us. I was talking to the pastor in the back and I said, I'm so confused by this generation because we always had struggles. We always had issues in the church. We always had problems. But nowadays, people will do wrong and flaunt it. Used to be if you did something, you got convicted about it. If you lied on somebody, if you did something wrong, if you said something wrong, if you acted a certain way, conviction would come in. And I'm praying that God would send conviction back into the church. Y'all going to sit on me, ain't you? I'm praying that God will send the kind of conviction that when you get ready to do something, there's something down. You say, no, you can't do that. You can't go there. But now we can lie to people's faces. Then we'll change the word of God to fit. We'll do something wrong and find a scripture to justify. And if somebody corrects you, you're saying you're being judgmental. Oh, you being deep. It don't take all that. It can be in black and white. The word of God says X, Y, Z. And they'll still look at it and say, that's not what the word say. It really means this. Shut up. You need to sit down and hear this word. Oh, I'm ready for you this morning. Y'all should have came to the 9 o'clock when we was chilling. Y'all let me come to the 11 o'clock where I can let loose and tell you what God said. We are, we are in such an age that we cannot accurately discern between the wheat and the tear. The wheat and the tear, the wheat and the weeds, 
look so much alike that we cannot tell the difference. That's, that's why we need the Holy Ghost to guide us because we lack the spiritual discernment to tell one thing from the other. And some of you right now, you need the Holy Ghost to guide you because you'll think somebody is a weed when they're really a wheat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of us have, 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 have made the mistake of calling something a wheat, but it really was a weed. You left people in place that should have been cut down. And you disconnected people that should have been promoted because you lack the discernment to tell the wheat from the tear. That's why we need the Holy Ghost because we don't have the good common sense to be able to discern which is which. We're under a spirit of delusion and I, even in our churches, my God. Even in our churches, Bible students who are having a difficult time determining who is with us and who is not. They look so much like us that we can't tell the difference between us. But I come to tell you, you're not like us. Yeah, they're not like us. You might dress like us, but you're not like us. You might wear your hair like us, but you not like us. You might sing like we do and clap like, I don't mind saying it. You might clap like we do and sing like we do, but you not like us. You're motivated by a different spirit. I bow to the spirit of my God. You worship the spirit of your flesh. I surrender to the Holy Spirit. You go by your own passions and your own proclivity. We not the same, baby. We might go to the same church, but you not like us. We might ride in the same car, but you not like us. We might have been born in the same family, but I don't think like you do. I don't act like you do. God has got something down in me that made it. Y'all better stop pushing me. I'll leap off this pulpit. Look at somebody say, God has made a change in me. Sit down, sit down, I'm not there yet. Uh, I hate to tell on myself, sometimes I testify, I hate to tell myself, but when I was out in the world and we was in the clubs, you couldn't leave your drink on the counter and walk away and come back because somebody would slip something in your drink. Uh, we would call it a Mickey. And they would slip something in your drink, you drink and you lose your whole mind. Y'all looking tight, some of y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm, so see, I hate that. I hate the trip. I hate when the saints act like they don't even know. What's a club? I ain't never been to a club. I never had a drink in my life. You know. Yeah, but for the real folks in here, you know what I'm talking about. Let me where my real people at in here. When we were in the streets, there were certain people that you couldn't buy drugs from. Because they would put something or lace your drugs with something. Well, I come to tell somebody that in the spirit, there are many people right now who are who have taken a spiritual Mickey. Somebody has slipped in some untruth to you and making you lose your mind. Why the saints losing their mind? You know we don't act like that. What has got a hold of your mind? The book of Revelation talks about how in the last days there'd be an increase in sorcery. The word sorcery means pharmakia, where we get the word drugs. And there'd be an increase of drug use, drug-induced high, drug-induced stupors. There'd be an increase in that where people are just out here doing anything because they lost their mind. Somebody thank God for having your mind. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power and of love and a sound mind. Somebody lay your hands on your own head and say, Lord, thank you for letting me have a sound mind. I'm not crazy. I'm not stupid. I'm not deluded. I'm not confused. I know the spirit of truth and I know the spirit of error. This is God and this is not. This is my father and this is not another voice. Now, more than ever, we need the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. You can't fake church, y'all. You can't act like you're being led. Some of you are running up against demonic spirits, and you're losing the battle because even the spirits know when you got the real thing or not. Paul, I know, but I don't know you. So we need the presence of God to keep us, to keep us, I say us, to keep even us from walking 
in a spirit of delusion. Blindly following every doctrine, every trend that is being introduced into the church. This is the new trend. This is how we do church now. This is how we dress now. This is how we live now. And we're just following everything blindly. The blind leading the blind into a ditch. It used to be before you put somebody in the pulpit to speak, they were vetted. They were trained. They were properly looked at and scrutinized before you got a microphone. Now, if you can just talk good, if you can just look good, if you can just smell good, they'll throw you a microphone. You still need some underpinning something in you oh y'all not gonna get with me this morning so now more than ever we need the Holy Spirit to navigate us through this sea of misinformation and disinformation that's coming at us all the time we're splitting and dividing over politics even Christians because misinformation has got us even fighting each other got us even not getting along with each other Disinformation, misinformation, and I need, above every other voice, I need to hear the voice of God. How many people need the voice of God? I need you, Lord, to help me. Lord, not, not just in church. I need you, Lord, to guide my decisions with my spouse. Open my eyes to see what I should be saying. When something is happening to him or her, I can discern in the spirit what the enemy's trying to do. And I know how to rebuke that spirit before it even comes up in this house. I know how to lay hands on that, on that spirit that's after my child before they get in trouble. I can speak that thing and say, loose that child right there. You won't have that. I can stand over that child right now and speak in tongues and bind every devil and every demon before it has a chance to get a hold of them. Somebody give God a praise if you got power. I'm almost there, y'all. See, So number one. Write this down. The Holy Spirit is a guiding influence. He's a guiding influence. That's what the Holy Spirit comes to do. Contrary to what people believe, the Holy Spirit doesn't just come to make us jump and shout. And I love to jump and shout. I'll go into a dance right now. You hit that organ, hit that drum, I'll go into, man, listen. They call special people in when they know I'm coming because they know we're going to have church. But listen, the Holy Spirit didn't just come to make you jump and shout. Truth be told, I didn't even need to get saved to know how to shout. I didn't need the Holy Ghost to know how to dance, sis. I was dancing before. See, y'all going to I hate, why y'all, why y'all playing with me today? Why y'all, why y'all fronting with me in here like y'all didn't get saved out the street? How many people knew how to dance before you got saved? Come on, there you go. Thank you for being honest. So I didn't need the Holy Ghost to teach me how to dance. If all you do is jump and shout and dance, but do not experience true transformation, you have done the Holy Spirit a disservice in your life. If you leap and jump and holler and you go back to what you were doing before, you do God a disservice. It is disrespectful for you to run all around the church and go back to the bottle that you just left. It is disrespectful for you to get up here and preach and shout and go back to running around with somebody you shouldn't be with. It is disrespectful for you to say, I'm an elder, I'm a preacher, I'm a pastor, I'm a singer on the stage, and then walk off the stage, go right back to the club and start singing. Loose here, the devil is a a lie. <laughs> they tight up in here. I don't know what the problem is. You have done him a disservice, but instead, it is the job of the Holy Spirit, catch this, to take you into the deeper things of God. Ooh, that the greatest thing that the Holy Spirit does for me is to take me into the deeper things of God. He's not just here to make me cry. He is not just here to make tears come down my face. But he is here to take me from one place to another. He is here to take me from faith to faith. 
and from glory to glory. He is here to mature me from where I was to where I'm going. He is the guide. He helps me. I don't have enough sense to know which way I should go, but the Holy Spirit takes me by the hand and says, step right here, step right there. That's why we got to hear the voice of God and know his voice because when you know somebody really well and you're familiar with them, you can shut all the lights out in this room, but I'll still know your voice if you're speaking. You need to be able to hear God's voice. Sometimes you got to shut your eyes so you can open your ear. We walk by faith and not by sight. We say that all the time, but truth be told, we're always judging people by what we see on the outside where God sees what they are on the inside. The disciples at that time, they couldn't possibly contain everything that God was saying. Jesus was dropping bombs on them. He was dropping revelation on them. And they were looking like confused, like what? It's almost like preachers sometimes. Sometimes you're saying things that's way over your head. And he said, I know you can't handle it right now. That there's things I want to tell you. I didn't run out of time. I didn't run out of message. I just ran out of time. I didn't run out of things to tell you. That the things I really want to drop on you is so heavy that you can't handle it right now. Some of you are still needing milk. You're in the pediatrics of faith. When God is ready to give you meat, he's ready to have a deeper conversation with you. He's ready to take you into some deeper things in God. God, God in the Old Testament was pictured that the prophet said that, that when he looked at the temple, that the water was around his ankles. Then he went a little further, he came up to his knees. Went a little further, he came up to his hip. Went a little further and suddenly he was swimming in it. That's where God wants to take you. You've been hanging around by the shore, by the shore letting it get around your ankles, but God wants to take you into deeper water. Do you hear what I'm saying? Who am I talking to in here? God said, you've been doing the same shout for the last five years. You've been doing the same dance for the same for the last five years. I'm going to take you into something deeper. Would look at somebody and say, it's deeper than that. Is deeper. That's why many people get bored with church because you don't realize that it's deeper than that. My God, you came and got a little dab or do you, but you got bored. But I'm coming to tell somebody that there's something deeper than that. That God will have you swimming in revelation. He'll have you swimming. Do you hear me? Have you swimming in glory? That the, that the deeper you go in God is still deeper than that. Oh my God. That you can get into a place in his presence where you almost can't make it back. In fact, let's try it right here. Somebody lift your hand. Begin to give God glory until the glory. Come on. Let, let's lift some glory in here. We need glory in this house. I, I, I mean so much glory that I can't finish this message. I mean so much glory that tumors begin to come up of people. I mean so much glory that I can't help myself. God, you ain't doing it. You ain't doing it. Come on, let's go all the way in. Let's go all the way. Let's go all, let's go swimming in it. I said, let's go swimming in this glory. See, the problem is with some of you, you used to have the little dab of church where you stick your foot in, get happy, and come back out. But I want some radical, crazy people who don't care what nobody thinks, who ain't looking at your watch or your Facebook, that will take 30 seconds and go all the way. Look at somebody and say, excuse me for a minute. I'm going all the way in. Excuse me, I'll be back in a minute. Excuse me, I'll be back in a minute. I got to give God glory. I got to give God praise. I'm going to give you 15 more seconds to get... All right, sit down. You had your chance. You had your chance. Disciples couldn't possibly understand all the deep things that Jesus was, was dropping on him. But he didn't leave them and try to figure it out either. He said, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. Which suggests there's levels to this, sis. There's levels to this. That, that you may not get it all at one time, but this is a faith walk. 
that we go from faith to faith and glory to glory. This is a faith walk. That there are some things that we go on to know. That you may not get it all at one time, but as you continue to walk with God, he will take you in to his promise. That if you don't get discouraged and give up on God and keep walking with the Holy Spirit, that he'll continue to develop and increase your life. He'll continue to drop revelation on you. When the Israelites came out of Egypt, the Bible said that, they, that God gave them a glory cloud, the Shekinah glory that led them across the wilderness. They didn't come out and just start figuring it out, but the Holy Spirit led them. It guided them. It protected them from their enemies at night and from the heat by day. They weren't particularly smart or powerful or efficient. The key to their success is that they just followed the cloud. I'm coming to tell somebody, you ain't got to be particularly educated or cute or smart. All you got to do to have victory is follow the cloud. I don't know what I'm doing, God, but I'm following you. Oh, my God. The problem with some of us is that you're glory stealers. You want to brag about what you're able to do. But I need somebody here who knows that I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for God. God, God got me off of drugs. God got me out of that situation. God took alcohol out my mouth. God took the needle out of my arm. God caused me to start a business with a GED. God caused me to keep this family together. God helped me raise these kids by myself. Somebody give God glory for God in you. Oh, when the Israelites came into the promised land, the, the promised land was so big that God said, I can't give it all to you at one time. And he said, I'll let you go in, but you're going to take it little bit by little bit. Little bit by little bit. Until you are increased. Until you've grown enough to possess the land for yourself. That there is wisdom in getting blessings in degrees and increments. That it is possible to get something before you're ready for it. That God in his wisdom has to hold back some things and spoon feed you and give it to you a little. It, it's, all, it's all for you. He promised it to you. But I got to let you have it in increments because some of you, if you got it now, it would kill you. Oh, y'all not listening. It is possible to have a good woman before you're ready for her. Nothing wrong with her. It's just that you're not mature enough to handle a confident, assured All you think about is hips, lips, and fingertips. You don't want nobody smart, intelligent, articulate. And so because that's all you can handle, that's all you get. But where are my ladies at? Who had to leave somebody who, because somebody fumbled you because they couldn't handle all that you are. And the temptation when you're with somebody who can't handle all that you are is to shrink yourself, to fit into that. But I'm going to talk to somebody here who's breaking out of those boundaries, breaking out of those bondages. I'm going to be who God has called me to be. I got to... Find your sister and say, be all you can be, baby. Be smart. Be intelligent. Be spirit-filled. I lose a spirit. I lose you from a spirit that controls your mind. God, increase my capacity. Increase, increase my ability to handle it. That's what I need. I don't need God to give me more stuff before I have more common sense. Some of you got more stuff before you got common sense. And when you get more stuff and you're not ready for it, then you'll lose it. It is possible to get a position that you're not ready for. So God holds back some stuff and he takes you through process because he is more committed to your development than he is to your comfort. Oh, I'm dropping bombs today. I'm dropping bombs. I said God is more committed to your development than he is to your comfort. And even if you have to hold it back for a while to develop you, he will do it because by the time you get there, you'll be ready for it. Somebody throw your hands up and say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready. You cannot have promise before you have process. Process is uncomfortable. 
Process is difficult. Process is annoying. And a lot of people want to jump up and have something without process. But as quick as you go up, you can go down just as quickly because you have not built the infrastructure to handle what God is. Oh my God, who am I talking to in here? The Holy Spirit wants to build some infrastructure. If you don't have the infrastructure to handle, it's going to crumble. It's going to collapse. But throw your hands and say, God, increase me. Number two, number two. Are you all writing these down? The Holy Spirit is a governing influence. He is a governing influence. To govern something means to control, to direct, to strongly influence the actions, the conducts, the conduct of another. What am I trying to say? You can't do the works of God without the Spirit of God. And many people are making the mistake of trying to do the works of God without the Spirit of God. You're trying to do things in your own strength and your own abilities. You're trying to do things that don't require God. And all of a sudden, God, and suddenly God will put you in situations where you've come to the end of yourself. Somebody right now feel like I'm at the end of my rope. I've come to the end of my resources. I don't know what I'm going to do. And God says, you're right where I want you to be. Because it's at the point that you have your extremity that you run into God's possibility. Y'all, y'all... <laughs> Y'all ain't ready for this today. When I pushed you to the end of yourself, that's when God shows up. And I'm trying to be a guarding, a governing force. Here's what the Bible said. He said this, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. To think that the God of heaven would take all of his majesty and his glory and his power and he would hide it in a clay pot is inconceivable to think he didn't choose gold vessels or silver vessels or valuable vessels he took his glory and he hid it in clay in nothing when I think about my life I realize that God didn't have much to work with he should have chose somebody more educated better looking taller shorter whatever but God chose in fact sometimes God chooses the worst he chooses the worst people, the least likely to succeed, and he puts his glory down in them because when they succeed, everybody knows this is God. If there anybody in here who's a witness that this is God, baby, you should have saw me five years ago. If you see me now, this is God. This is God. If you want to know what a testimony look like, look at me. This is God. Everybody in here was an ex something, an ex offender, an ex prostitute, an ex addict, an ex wife beater, an ex whatever. But if God has brought you out and you were an ex anything, would you give God 30 seconds of praise and just thank Him? Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I wouldn't have made it. I should have lost my mind. I should be dead, sleeping in my grave. But God, is there anybody in here who will thank God for bringing you out of anything? Give our God a Last thing, and I'm done for real. <laughs> Are y'all getting something out of this? I said, you getting something out of this? You got to holler at me because I can't tell. Are you getting something out of this? The Holy Spirit is a guarding influence. He is a guarding influence. When somebody is being guarded, that means they're being, they're being provided protection. That he's, he's, the Holy Spirit serves like a sentinel. He stands there on duty all the time. He that keeps Israel will not sleep nor slumber. That even when you sleep, God is on the case. He's watching over you. He's watching. That's why the thief didn't come in and steal your stuff last night because God was protecting you. 
That's why people who had ill intent towards you, it didn't work because God was protecting you. That's why when they tried to fire you on their job, they ended up getting fired themselves because God was protecting you. That's why some of you were using the club and they were shooting the bullet didn't hit you because God was protecting me. That's why some of you, you can't move, you step with more people than you can count, but you didn't get AIDS because God was protecting today devil not here that's my child you can't have him you can't have her I'm going to stand there and protect I know a God who is so faithful that he'll protect you from yourself that sometimes my worst enemy is not you it's me and God will sit on you he'll protect you from your own bad decisions Step right in the way and say, you can't go. You can't. Will somebody give God 30 seconds of praise for his place? Protection. How about somebody and say protection? That's my testimony. Protection. You got here because you was educated. You got here because you were smart. You got here because you was cute. But I got here because God... He protected me. Well, protect me from what? He protected me from the intentions, the wiles, the schemes, the strategies of the enemy. That you got an enemy that walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. That the enemy's trying to always catch you slipping. That he's always trying to catch you unawares. But even when you're not paying attention, God said, I got your back. Let, let, let me go here. God said to tell somebody, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises up, I'll shut it down. Oh my God, who am I talking to in here? Somebody here right now, you're worried because somebody's threatening you. But God said they can threaten you, but it's not gonna work. Oh my God, it's not gonna work. You got indigestion. You can't sleep at night. You pacing the floor because somebody threatened to fire you or leave you or lie on you. But God said, go to bed. Get some rest. I'm on the case. You worried about that thing? If you going to sit up and worry about it and I'm going to be on the case, one of us is unnecessary. If you're going to walk the floor at night and worry about it, I might as well not be here. Go to bed. Because God said, I got you. You are under my foot. Who am I preaching to in here today? I shouldn't be sweating this hard. Who am I preaching to? God said, I got you under my protection. Protection. I had to drop that on you. Because I know what it's like to live under the threat of an enemy. Sometimes, this is what I found out, Pastor. Sometimes the threat of something happening is worse than the thing actually happening. Anyone know what I'm talking about? That sometimes just you worrying about what might happen is worse than what actually happened. And sometimes some of you, the Bible, the, some of you are living in a spirit of fear. I would go forward, but I'm afraid. I, I would give my life to Jesus, but I'm afraid I won't be able to keep up with the lifestyle. I would start the business, but I'm afraid it's going to fail. I would get married to her, but I'm afraid she's going to cheat on me. I would marry him, but I'm afraid it's not going to work because I've, I've had history. I've got family. I've got generational curses. I've got things in my background that suggest that I shouldn't be successful. And sometimes the fear of something happening will cripple you. But I want to deliver somebody today from a spirit of fear. Oh my God, I'm coming against a spirit of fear on today. 
and I'm loosing your mind right now to go into everything that God, God would not have showed it to you if he wasn't going to give it to you. God would not have given you the mind to even want it if he didn't want you to have it. God wouldn't have dangled it in front of you if it wasn't supposed to be yours. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The reason why I know it's mine is because I got faith for it. I rebuke the spirit of fear right now and I'm coming out with a spirit of faith. I need the Holy Ghost to tell me the truth about who I am and whose I am. High five by three people say, go get it. Go get it. I hear the Holy Ghost saying, go get it. Go get it. I don't, you ain't doing it. I heard the Holy Ghost say distinctly, go get it. I don't know what your it is. I don't know what you've been standing there contemplating. I don't know what you've been wondering about, but God said, go get it. Is there anybody in here? Stop talking about it. Stop fixing to do it. Stop contemplating. Stop calling people to say, well, what do you think? Well, what do you think? God said, go get it. Go get your stuff. Go get your kids. Go get your minutes. Reach over and tell somebody, go get it. Go get it. Yeah, you're going to prophesy today. Go get it. Go get it. That secret thing, that thing that you've been harboring in your heart and you thought it was a foolish dream, but it was God speaking to you saying it's for you. You're supposed to do it. You keep trying to tell other people to do it and God's been trying to tell you, no, I want you to do it. Touch somebody else and say, go get it. Let me close this a moment my time. Read down a few more verses. Jesus says this, he said, the Holy Spirit will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears me speak, that will he say. The reason why you need better to hear the voice of the Spirit is because he is the conduit between you and heaven. That heaven is having a conversation about you right now. I found this out from working in, in business environments that sometimes when people are being promoted or being considered for promotion, that there's typically people in rooms talking about you, discussing you in rooms that you haven't even entered into yet. That the truth be told that before somebody drops a position or an opportunity on you, there's already conversations being had back here behind the curtain that nobody even hears. It's, it seems like a surprise to you, but somebody else has already been assessing the situation, determining that you are the one. And now somebody's got to come back and tell you what they said about you in the boardroom. Lord, who am I talking to? God said to tell somebody that there is a prophecy hanging over your life right now that heaven is speaking concerning you that there's a conversation going on right above your head lift your hands right here because there's a conversation who are we talking to there's a conversation being had above your head right now that God is speaking good things concerning you that he's speaking favor over your life that he's speaking blessings over your life that the Holy Ghost is trying to let you know what God has available to you and Jesus said that whatever is mine I'm going to give it to you because everything that belongs to the Father belongs to me. And now I'm going to give it to you. Well, what belongs to the Father? Healing belongs to the Father. Peace belongs to the Father. Joy belongs to the Father. Victory belongs to the Father. Favor belongs to the Father. God says, I have all this stuff in my storehouse. And I'm ready to give it to you. But the Holy Spirit is going to be like your mailman. And drop off your mail. If you can receive it, if you can believe it, if you're ready to have this, somebody shout, I'm ready. You ain't ready. Let me come over here and say, somebody shout, I'm ready. I want everything that God has for me. I'm tired of living in lack. I'm tired of living in fear. I'm tired of living in disorientation. I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of being frustrated. When God, when my father is rich, why am I acting like a poor man when my father is rich? All God's kids that know that you are rich, give God a shout right here. Listen, stay on your feet. I'm going to close. I'm done. Stand to your feet. I want to resist the moment to shout right here. I want to resist the urge to go into a dance right here.
because I hear the Holy Spirit calling somebody. I hear the Holy Spirit talking to somebody in this room. Somebody in this room who doesn't even know Jesus. I, I, just, I just sense something. I can't describe it. That's, that's calling me. That's calling me to something higher. That Zion is calling you to a higher place of praise. Some of you are saved, but you're still living beneath your privileges and God is calling you to a higher place. The call on you is so strong that you can't deny it. And in this moment right here, I sense God telling me to stand against the spirit of delusion. That spirit that's been keeping you walking around bound, that's telling you you can't get up and you can't be free and you can't get out of it. I break that spirit today. I stand against it in Jesus' name. It is not stronger than the spirit of God. You got to loose that soul and let them go. You got to take your hand off their mind. You got to loose your control. I stand against addiction right now in the name of Jesus. Alcohol addiction, sex addiction, drug addiction. The spirit of God is here to set you free. So for a moment, I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. Bow your head, close your eyes. Father, in this room right now, Grab somebody's hand. I want you to let the Lord use you as his evangelist. In this room right now is somebody who is suffering from a spirit of delusion, walking around in confusion. The enemy wants them to hide in the midst of us, to hide amongst all these people. But I sense you calling them out right now. I sense you pulling them out right now. Their whole mind is changing. Suddenly I believe that salvation is for me. Suddenly I realize that Jesus died for me. Suddenly I understand that I don't have to live like this. All these people in this room, Lord, are witnesses and testimonies of your saving power. You snatched us out of the worst places that we can imagine. And we stand now as a testimony of the power of God and what he is able to do and they're holding the hand of somebody right now who is not convinced but I break that control right now in the mighty name of Jesus and I pray God that you will loose every bound person every person that's struggling with an addiction or a habit every person that's struggling with salvation they want to come but something in them won't let them come I break that spirit right now in Jesus name amen listen if you're in here and you don't know Jesus Christ I want to ask you to come now that spirit can't hold you that spirit can't hold you. That addiction can't hold you. They're coming right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't let the devil have your mind. Don't let him have your mind another day. I loose you today. I loose you today. If you're a backslider and you know you need Jesus, I loose you today. You've been living beneath your privileges. You've been living beneath what God has for you. But the Holy Spirit is ready to walk you out of it right now. Come on. They're coming. You ought to be glad. You ought to be getting more rejoicing than that. Come on, I need you to lift this room. Come on. Somebody's coming out of it right now. 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 They're coming all the way from the back. They're coming. They're coming out of every corner. Oh my God. I wish I had a praying church. I wish I had a praying church. There's a struggle going on in the spirit right now, but the Holy Ghost is winning. I feel chains breaking right now. I see prison doors opening right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wish I had some praying saints who would pray 30 more seconds. They're running out of it. They're leaping out of it. They're coming out of it. Come on. All the way in the back, they're coming, come on. All the way over here, they're coming, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Hey. Have your way, God. Have your way, God. I hear you calling me. Have your way.
Come on, sis. That's the Holy Spirit talking to you. You're wondering what this is you're feeling. That's the Holy Ghost pulling on you. Come on, man. It's stronger than your addiction. God will get you out of it. God will let you. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. I didn't come from Nashville to play church with you. I came to get something out of it. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Wherever you are here, they come, they come, and whole families are coming. Come out, come out, wherever you are. I'm shaking the tree. I'm shaking the bushes because I was sent here to get somebody. If you're standing out there, can I use you to be the Lord's evangelist for just a second? Would you check with somebody, check your row on the left and on the right and just ask them one simple question. Ask them, do you know Jesus? Do you know him? Come on, don't be scared. How are you going to be an evangelist for God and you're scared to talk to the person sitting next to you? Just ask them. If they look uncomfortable, if they look at the ceiling or look at the floor, just, just say, look, I'll go with you. Come on, I'll walk you up there. You ain't got to go by yourself. Come on, I'll go with you. I'll, there, see, look, that's what I'm talking about. I'll go with you. I'll go with you. Come on. Come on, God wants you to be free. He sat me next to you because he knew pastor was going to ask that question. Hey, hey, here they come. I told you. I told you. Come on, young man. Let the tears fall. Come on. Come on up here. Come on. Somebody else on this side. You need to come. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sis, for answering. Somebody else. Somebody else. Somebody else. Somebody else. Somebody else. Somebody else, ministers, go ahead and start moving in. Just start ministering. They're coming. They're still coming. Somebody's still wrestling. They're on the fence right now. There it is. Amen. Come on. Somebody rejoice with this young man. Come on. Come out. Come out wherever you are. I'm on assignment. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the child. Lift your hands and say, y'all! Yeah! I'm going to turn the mic over to the pastor, but listen, if there's somebody else who needs to come, I need salvation. I'm a backslider. I need to be free from an addiction. Some of you right now, the enemy wants to keep you under control and keep your mind under control. I break the control. Some of you being there's another one. Come on. Some of you, the real issue with you is you're letting people control your mind. I loose you from people's opinion right now. I loose you from what he said and she said. I loose you. Come on, Pastor. Take this mic before I go into something else. Give God praise if you receive yes. this word. Give Come God on. praise if you receive this word. Yes. I mean, if you receive this word way down on the inside, take 30 seconds right here and give God a crazy. I said, give God a crazy. That ain't crazy. I said, give God a crazy. Wave your hands in the air. Wave like you just don't care. Crazy praise. Come on. How many received a word from God today? How many are ready? You're saying, I'm ready to be guided by the Holy Spirit. Someone say, Holy Spirit, guide me. Can we give Pastor Derek, Derek a big round of applause of appreciation? Thank you. Thank you to the Lord for using him. For those that just came to the altar, we're going to help you take your next step. Your next step is to get baptized and sign up for a class called Holy Warriors. The person in front of you, they'll pray with you in a moment, but they also, we want to make sure you get signed up for your next step. That's this class is coming up in a few days. If there's, if, if you, there's no one in front of you to pray with you yet, we'll pray with you, but just scan that code behind me, sign up for your class. Aren't we grateful for all those that gave their life to Jesus today? Let's bow our heads, let's close our eyes. Repeat this prayer after me, everybody. Say, Jesus, say with me, say, Jesus, thank you for going to the cross for dying for my sins and raising from the dead so I can be saved. I repent. I turn away from my sin. Forgive me, Lord. From this moment forward, my life belongs to you. Thank you, Lord. Be the Lord 
and the Savior of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, guide me and lead me from this moment forward. I'm a new creation and I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name I pray. And we say amen, church, amen. Church, be here Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We have a service for you. We believe God is going to move in a mighty way. We love you. If you need prayer, come forward. And remember, if God is for you, there's no one who can come against you. God bless you, church. Have a wonderful Sunday. God bless.